the opening prayer. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Would you please join me in the reading of the call to worship? We gather to worship the one who crafted creation out of chaos. Our cries of joy join the anthems of the universe. We gather to lift our praise to the God who gave us voice. We bring the song. We gather as children of God, our joy unbroken in God's love. Young and old, tone deaf and perfect pitch, lift the new, new songs of faith. With joy, let us worship God. Could we join our hearts, please, for the prayer for peace? Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and the many blessings that you've given us. Father, as we light our peace lamp once again, we pray for guidance for our leaders and the leaders around the world that they may find a solution to this war on terror. We pray for the safety of our peacekeepers that are stationed in many foreign countries. Father, we pray that you would hold the our troops in your loving hands, protect them as they protect us. We pray that you would bless them and their families for the selfless acts and sacrifices that they perform in this time of need. We especially pray, Father, for Dustin, Jack, Alex, and Chris, who has been deployed in harm's way. We also pray, Father, for the men and women of the 10th Mountain Division who are deployed in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, and Kuwait. We pray that you would extend your love and protection to each of them till they can be returned to their loved ones. These things we humbly ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us welcome one another in the name of Christ. You as well. Good morning. Let's be with you first. Good morning, David. Well, thank you. Sorry to stay warm. Is Eric here? Good. Good, good. Please be with you, my lovely. He's right back in here. All right. Please be with you, David.
Please join me in the opening prayer. O oh God, we open our mouths to praise you, and you open our spirits to receive you. We open our minds to learn of your ways, and you open our wills to follow. We open our hands to serve you, and you open our hearts to love you. We are open to your mystery of God. Make yourself known in us this day. Amen. Y'all may be seated, and kids of any age, I invite you to join me for a few minutes. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Oh, am I on? Yes. Are we on? We are on. Good morning. Ooh, good morning, Ben. All right. We got Lillian, Andrew, and everyone. I have a question. Do you like to sing? No. No? <laughs> well, good. Who likes to sing out there? There. You know, it's in Scripture. It says, Psalm 98, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. So anyone can sing. You don't have to be on pitch, which is good for me. You can just... So you like to sing, Rosie. Do you sing all the time? Not too much? But you like to sing. Michael, you don't like to sing. And can I ask why? Lily likes to scream. Why don't you like to sing? Because it's boring. Okay. Who else likes to sing? Do you like to sing? Do you sing all the time? Do you sing in the shower? No? Does anybody sing in the shower? I have this thing that I do is somebody will say something and a phrase will come up and Deb, Deb Van Houten knows this, I burst into song, right? And it's usually something from the 1960s, <laughs> maybe the 70s, sometimes the 50s. <laughs> but I love to sing. And so Miss Lisa is over here. We're going to try to teach you a song this morning about joy. And the words go... I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. Can you play that for us? You guys, and you all out there, it's pretty catchy. <laughs> so let's try it. good. Very good out there. Kathy, I think you need to do some recruiting, okay? <laughs> when you hear a song like that, does it make you sad? No. no. Oh. Because it's a song. Well, we get that, Michael. <laughs> but it's fun, and it makes you feel joy-filled. And we should be joy-filled on Sunday because we get to come and worship God. Does that make sense to you guys? And Does that make sense out there? Then let's pray. Good and gracious God, thank you for today. Thank you that you bring us joy. Help us to be joy-filled in our worship of you. And in all things, we give you thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Let's go. You can go to Sunday school and be joy filled. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> Mission moment? No. Okay. You guys sounded really good out there. Now I'm going to have you be humming that all during the sermon this morning. I can see it. <laughs> well, we come to a time in our service where we do have opportunity to share those witnesses to the presence of God in our lives, joys, and concerns. Um, I know that some of you know that uh, Leon and Margie Van Wee were in a, involved in a car accident uh, this past week. They are fine. Their car is a little worse for the wear. Um, but it just reminds us, we don't want to admit it, but it is now time for winter driving habits. And that nasty lake effect can happen in a moment's notice. I would also ask that you would pray for my friend, Mary, uh, Reverend Mary Rubley. She too was in a car accident this week. The airbags deployed with her accident. She ended up going to Strong by ambulance. She is... <clears throat> fine. She is very, very sore. Um, but um, please pray for her. And I want to again thank all veterans, um, all that serve in the military. We thank you so much for your service. And we do pray that uh, God's blessing will be upon you, God's peace and protection. And may soon, may war be a thing of the past. Other joys? Concerns? God sightings? Anyone? Anyone? Lenora. A couple, uh, a good thing. And, um, I ask also that everybody keep my grandmother in your prayers. She is um, a strong willed woman and she's going to give her battle of cancer a good fight. She starts her treatments of radiation tomorrow. But with that said, my cousin from Florida is coming up, and we're going to get to have some family time. So please keep you, her and her family in your prayers as they have safe travels. Thank you. Ori? Kim? I have a great, son, mm -hmm. great announcement that I'm going to be a grandmother again. Yay! She has tried to have a baby for almost 10 years, and that happened. <laughs> So she's going to have a baby boy, so it's going to be two boys in the family. Aw, congratulations. Tom. God sights. Today in our wired word, which we invite all of you to every morning, Sunday morning from 9 to almost 10, we were able to share some wonderful God sights that enabled certain things to happen to others, in particular, we had someone who uh, sent emails to her dead father and someone mm -hmm. answered it. And this person, they helped each other phenomenally because they were willing to share where they came from and their needs. And hopefully this whole Asbury family can help one another. It's as we help one another, we can God sight the whole world. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Others? Wayne? Uh, I got a phone call this morning from my daughter-in-law, um, and she had informed us that her grandfather, after an illness, and uh, he'd been battling some, some problems, and uh, he had Alzheimer's, and he passed this morning. So we're looking, she wanted prayer for the family of Gordon Peebles. But the uh, God sighting that I want to say is, um, as the service was started, I got a text from her, and she had mentioned that in church this morning, that the minister there, who was really an amazing guy, he, uh, she said he knows exactly what to say and when to say it. And his sermon today was set her in comfort. And I just think that that was truly a God sighting. Great. Thanks, Wayne. Others? I would also ask that you would keep uh, Dick and Cindy Murphy in your prayers. Dick is in hospital on comfort care. Other? Joys, concerns, God sightings. Seeing none, let's join together in prayer. Good and gracious God, it is such a privilege to be able to come 
to you in prayer. You encourage us, you long for us to come to you with all of our joys and all of our struggles and all of our concerns. And sometimes we are so hesitant because we think our stuff is not worthy of bringing up to you. But the trick is, God, you already know it. And nothing is too small. Nothing is too, quote, insignificant. Because you love us that much. You say that we are your children and we are of sacred worth. So anything that we need to bring to our Heavenly Father is fair game. So thank you. Thank you for being here, for bending close to us so that we can share our joys and concerns. And thank you that we have this community of faith that we can also share our joys and concerns with. We are so grateful, God, that you have gifted us this, this building, this house of worship, but more important, the people, because the church, as we know, are the people a loving, caring family that does lift joys and concerns of one another to you. Oh God, we, we, we look at our world at times and we sure know that things are not the way you really want them to be. But when we step out in faith, guided by your spirit, and we take one step of faith at a time, there's so many things that can be done. In our scripture passage this morning, God, we will talk about joy. Sometimes joy is elusive, but again, like peace, you ask us to pursue joy as well. And we can look for joy even in the midst of very trying times. So God, we have lifted up joys and, con and, joys and concerns shared and held. We know we just know that you will answer each and every one in your perfect way and time. You have gifted us a beautiful world, God. You have gifted us the change of seasons. You have gifted us with your Son, our Savior, and we are so profoundly grateful. May you work in us this day that we may hear your word clearly. And then as we leave this place to go back into the world that you love, that we will care for those who maybe haven't heard the good news of your Son, our Savior, Jesus. And in Jesus' words, we pray to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
today is from the book of Psalms, Psalm number 98. Sing a new song to the Lord, who restores the ends of the earth. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for the Lord has done marvelous things. God's right hand and holy arm have gotten the victory. The Lord has declared the victory and has released his vindication in the sight of the nations. The Lord has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the glory of God. Sing a new song to the Lord, who restores the ends of the earth. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with a lyre, with a lyre, lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the Lord. Make a joyful noise before the ruler, the Lord. Sing a new song to the Lord, who restores the ends of the earth. Let the sea roar, 
and all that fills it. Let the world and those who dwell in it let the floods slap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord, who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the people with equity. Sing a new song to the Lord, who restores the ends of the earth. Lisa, it does say one in four, but we just kept going on and on and on. No, no, it's all right. So, how can it be anybody's fault when we're singing with joy? Amen? Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, neighbors and friends, let us join together in prayer. Good and gracious God, you have gifted us a wonderful day to be together as brothers and sisters in Christ. In this moment, God, bring these words, may they be your words. Transform them however you need to transform them. And transform us by the power of your spirit. So Lord, may the words of my mouth and meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Joy. Three little letters, one syllable. Joy. It should be easy to define, yes? So in the dreaded audience participation time, <laughs> what is your definition of joy? Happiness. Happy. Gladness. Gladness. Fulfillment. Fulfillment. Peace. Peace. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. I, of course, went to our friends at Merriam Webster online. They tell us that joy is the emotion evoked by well being, success, or good fortune, or by the prospect of possessing what one desires delight. The expression or exhibition of such emotion, gaiety. How many times do you get to say the word gaiety very much? A state of happiness. Oh, here's one we haven't heard in a while. Felicity. Whoa. Bliss. A source or cause of delight. We name our baby girls joy. We enjoy a good book. We can be overjoyed when we receive a pay raise. <clears throat> <clears throat> pay raise. <laughs> Just kidding. Back in the day when gasoline was cheap, we could go on a joy ride. Joy sticks are used for video games, while people can ruin a perfectly good evening simply by being a killjoy. 
There is Joy Dishwashing Soap. Please tell me why we named dish detergent Joy. <laughs> Does anybody really enjoy doing dishes? Well, sometimes, keep my hands, you know, warm. Now, according to our friends at Wikipedia, Joy is related by manufacturer to cheer detergent. Little known fact. <laughs> and again, why would we have a detergent named Cheer? Baker's Joy will keep cake from sticking to the pan. Then there's the ultimate joy. Almond Joy candy bar. <laughs> as opposed to Mounds because sometimes you feel like a nut and sometimes you don't. Very good. I worked hard at all those joy things. Joy. Simple? Not really. Joy can be very hard to come by. It's not a sure thing. Something the residents of Mudville found out when Casey came to bat. You know, there's no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck, I know. Yeah, what was I, what was I thinking when I wrote this, right? <laughs> Caroline Lewis, Associate Professor of Homiletics at Luther Seminary, surmised, joy is not abstract happiness. Joy is elusive. True joy is hard to come by and seems simply impossible when one starts down the road of real life. Joy is hard. It takes work. It takes effort. It takes intention. Turn on the news. Talk about killjoys. While there are innumerable wildfires on the west coast, many parts of the east coast are flooded. There are protests in Hong Kong, Chile, Ecuador, and China, to name a few countries. While Canadian Premier Justin Trudeau tries to form a minority government, Israeli Prime Minister ben Benjamin Netanyahu looks to be out of a job. Boris Johnson called for a general election in the UK because, well, Brexit. School shootings, once unheard of, seem to be in the news more often than not. And then the ever popular 2020 presidential season is already ramping up with the added bonus. But wait, there's more possible impeachment. That just scratches the surface. We haven't even talked about illness or depression or suicide or job loss or abuse or injustice or prejudice or anxiety or broken relationships. Is your pastor a kill joy? <laughs> Amidst all this unjoy, there's a kernel of hope, a pearl of great price. Psalm 98 reminds us that even in the depths of despair, there is joy amidst the chaos. Verse 1 is a splash of cold water on a hot summer's day. Sing to the Lord a new song, for the Lord has done wonderful deeds. His right hand has won a mighty victory. His holy arm has shown his saving power. How can you not be joy-filled when you read those words? It was God who did wonderful deeds. Yes, the same God who created the world with a single word. God alone secured the victory for God's people. God's holy arm demonstrated the saving power of the Holy One. To what did the psalmist refer? And where have we heard these similar words before? You can go back to Exodus chapter 15, when the Israelites were literally between a rock and a hard place, God secured the victory by parting the Red Sea. Once the Israelites were safely across, the sea filled its bed, drowning the Egyptian army, the most sophisticated army at that time. 
Subsequently, Moses led God's people in a song of deliverance. To kind of quote scripture, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, the horse and rider thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. This is my God. I will praise him, my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. You can just see that song of victory and the joy on people's faces. All along, it was God. It was nothing the Israelites did or didn't do. It was God. God chose them. God protected them. God worked through folks like Abraham and Isaac, Jacob and Moses. There's not a shadow of a doubt God's people suffered under the oppression of the Egyptians. However, it was God who heard their cries. It was God who brought them out of Egypt. It was God who showed God's strength and power, not only to the Israelites, God showed God's strength and power to Pharaoh and all of Egypt. What did all of this strength and power show? It showed it was Israel's God who could save, plain and simple. Not the gods of Pharaoh, not the gods of the Canaanites, Yahweh alone. Thus the Israelites had a cause to celebrate. Fast forward now to the time that this, this psalm, the, the uh, historians believe that this psalm was written. It was written during the Babylonian exile, God's people had little to celebrate. It is true that they had been warned time and again to turn from their ways. It is also true that they chose to turn away from God, choosing to follow the ways of the world. The result? Oppression, exile, decimation of their homelands, we know the lucky ones, the strong, the healthy, they were forced to go to Babylon, a strange land with strange customs. <clears throat> Those left in Jerusalem, the sick, the fragile, the least, and the lost had to fend for themselves. So why on earth would the psalmist write about joy? Talk about being in the midst of a great depression, why would the psalmist write about joy? The psalmist wanted the folks living through the Babylonian exile to remember God had not forgotten them. God did not condone their rebellious behavior. However, God was not in the business of forever turning God's back on God's people. God had remembered God's people, on that you can be sure. And there will come a day when God's people will go home to Jerusalem and we know that the Babylonian captivity ended and God's people did go back to Jerusalem. And there will be great joy on that day. But what the psalmist was saying, in the meantime, in this in-between time, trust in God's promises. God did not forsake you in Egypt. God will not forsake you in Babylon. And if that's the case, it's time to break out in joy. It's time to sing to God a new song, a song of love, a song of gratitude. It doesn't have to be because you feel joy-filled. It is the expectation of God fulfilling God's promises that makes us joyful. Carolyn Lewis says joy has to be pursued. And so she personally reads the dictionary definition of joy each and every day. And by reading those definitions each day, she finds the ability then to pursue joy. And she challenged all of us. She said, what do you need to remind you that joy 
can be present. Who do you need around you to tell you that joy is here? Especially in the face of those who seek to steal your joy away. And we know there are people that like nothing better than to steal our joy. Those who seem quite determined to make sure that your joy is but a dream. That which tries to quell your joy. Remember, breaking out in joy doesn't have to be perfect. The psalmist said a joyful noise is all that is required. All of creation will join in the chorus, the sea, the sea creatures, even the water and the mountains will shout for joy. This is the God who doesn't forget God's promises to God's people. So where does that leave us, we 21st century folk? About what do we have to shout? About what do we have to feel joy-filled? Where's God in the midst of modern tragedies? Victims of earthquakes, tsunami, poverty, war, political struggle. Closer to home, where's God in my personal struggle? The cancer diagnosis, the loss of job, being a single parent, the aging process. Where are our golden years? Right? The cost of living just to survive. Foreclosure. The rising drug epidemic. Do I choose to buy food or medicine? Do I heat my home in the winter? Or do I fuel my car to work my minimum wage job? Where is God in the midst of our tragedies? Right where God has always been in the midst of our struggles. You see, God came to us in the form of Jesus, the sinless one who took our sins and shortcomings upon himself. For those who choose to follow Jesus, the promises of God are just as relevant today as they were back then. God did not forsake God's people back then, whether Egyptian slavery or Babylonian exile. God did not and will not forsake us now. God in Christ walks with us during all of our days, wonderful joys and devastating sorrows, when things are cooking on all cylinders and when nothing seems to be working. Friends, we can reach for that elusive gold ring our world loves to flaunt from now till Christ returns. Promises of easy money, eternal youth, every desire satisfied. Is that tempting? You bet it's tempting. The catch? Nothing our culture offers will eternally satisfy. Go down that rabbit hole and you will continue to be unfulfilled now through the time Christ returns. Really, we all know it, the choice is certainly yours. You can dwell on the negative. You can look to the world to temporarily anesthetize the heartache. Dwell on what divides ethnicity, gender, education, politics, finances, you name it, repeat with the same numbing, divisive results, or follow the path of Christ, even in the midst of struggle. Pursue contentment, peace, joy. Concentrate on our common joy in the risen Lord. God's promises are true, dependable, life-affirming. And friends, that is something worth singing about. Let us pray. 
God, we know that we can turn on our computers, we can read the paper, turn on the radio, the TV, and we know that there's not a lot of joy that comes back at us. And yet you tell us to continue to pursue joy because you give us that ultimate joy, that peace and security in Jesus. So God, as we chew on that this week, help us to pursue joy in all we say and all we do, knowing that you are there in our struggles, wherever we may be. We will give you all praise and glory in the name of Christ. Amen. So friends, we do come to a time in our service where we first present ourselves to God and then we present our tithes and our gifts for our morning offering. join me in the prayer of dedication as printed in our bulletins. Let us pray. Take our gifts, composing God, and weave a song of healing for the broken, of nourishment for the hungry, of hope for those who despair, and peace for those torn by violence. We sing our praises as we offer our treasures as well as our hearts. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Amen. Our final hymn is 246.
please join together in our sending forth. As God has loved us, so we will go to love those despised by the world. As Jesus has forgiven us, we will go to forgive everyone who has hurt us and bring healing into their brokenness. As the Spirit calls us friends, so we will go to befriend the outcast, the lonely, and the lost of our society. Amen. You may be seated.
This has been a broadcast of the 1015 service Sunday morning from Asbury United Methodist Church located on Franklin Street in Watertown, Asbury United Methodist Church.